Welcome to the Art of Money podcast with Art McPherson. And thanks for checking out the Art of Money podcast. My name is Mark Owens alongside Art McPherson and Luke McCarty. All the information for the McPherson Financial Group. You can find it at theartofmoneyradio.com. Luke, before you got here, uh, we were talking to Coach Julie about Tom Brady. After what, about a 20 minute retirement, he's back in the game. What was your initial reaction to that? Maybe he couldn't afford the gas in his yacht. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, my comment is, you know, $25 million isn't what it used to be. I mean, after, you know, two years of 7% inflation, he had to go back to work. Yeah, yeah maybe the rent went up on the house he's renting from Derek <laughs> Jeter. I don't know if he's still doing that when he first went to Tampa. I think, I think that's what he was doing. I'm I think sure, they found a place. I'm sure they bought a place by now. But, you know, he got to see his last rendezvous, his last kind of run through the NFL and Somebody bought his last touchdown football for $500,000. Oh, Oops. Like hours, <laughs> hours yeah. before Tom Brady announced. Ouch. Yeah. So, so what Won't you, be the last touchdown ball anymore. No. <laughs> Might be able to sell it for $50,000. that would be a bad investment right there. But mm-hmm. What does it say about Tom Brady's home life that he can't even spend a full month at home before he's like, I can't do this anymore? <laughs> well, see, that's what I, that was my jokes with Julie when she was in here is he got home, was home for three and a half weeks. Spring break was during that period of time. Oh. So he's home with the kids, Giselle's got him home every day and he has nothing to look forward to. He's just like, okay, this is going to be every day. And he's like, I'm out. I can't take it. Or Giselle was like, you need to go back to work. (laughs) Maybe she sent him back to work. That happens. (laughs) Yes, it does. I'm used to watching film, not Disney plus all day. Yes. Uh, well, let me ask you this, Luke McCarty, because if we kind of joke there, but inflation, the gas prices, if one of your clients, they do have to jump back into work pretty quickly, what is the most comfortable way to make that transition without really hurting everything that you already have accomplished with the retirement plan? Sure. So it's more on the lines of what the client wants to do. A lot of times when you retire from something, it's because you're, you're tired of it. You, you know, you want a different job. You're working too much. Um, the fear I have sometimes with clients going back to work is that they're going back into something new, right? The grass isn't always greener. And if you take a full-time job in retirement, it could be worse than your full-time job you worked at for 30, 40 years. So you have to be very careful about kind of your decisions and and where you go and the reasons why you go there. Um, You know, we joked about Tom Brady and Art joked about his family and getting away and stuff, but you know, it happens. People go back to work, you know, your social security, you know, be careful on that. You don't want to start it early before full retirement and then go back to work. You know, and then if you have a new benefits package, that's something we help our clients with determine, okay, we had a portfolio set up, we were retired, now we have this extra income, should we do something different with it? And that's kind of where we look at it and, and almost develop a second financial plan, like a add on to the big current one of, okay, you have this extra income, what should you do differently that you didn't do for the last 30, 40 years? Let me ask you that, Luke. Like, what does happen to your Social Security if you start drawing from it, but then you go back to work? How negatively does that affect everything? It depends how old you are. So if you're before your full retirement age, 66 in some months or 67, you know, you can be penalized for making over $19,800 or $19,000 ish. It, it changes every year. You know, if you make more than that, you could be penalized. So you don't want to start Social Security early. Right. Go back to work, get penalized. And then when you stop working, right, you're still deemed to have started claiming at that earlier date. So you never get those eight percent increase step ups as if you would have if you waited. Yeah. And that could be very painful because as an example of how they do it from Social Security side, Mark, if you are working and you get that where you've worked too much and we've had some client examples of this, we had a client who was trying to be under that threshold and his employer, he was taking the last two weeks off unpaid, had a glitch in their computer system and actually had to pay him because they couldn't solve the glitch before it. So he actually got too much money and it was only by $300. But what happened is his first check with social security was withheld in January because they withhold the whole check. If you owe any Anything. It doesn't matter if it's a $2,000 check because you went over by $300. They withhold the whole check. So uh, that can be a big problem. So you don't want to have those kind of issues and you don't want to have those kind of problems with Social Security. So if you have a question about Social Security or maybe you need a hurry up retirement or maybe you're just thinking, I've been retired, but maybe it's time to jump back into the workforce. We'll give the team a call because Art McPherson wants to personally invite you to sit down to customize a retirement plan for you. 321 425 8550. No cost, no obligation to you. And 
we were talking about the high gas prices. It is on everybody's mind. Well, we hit the streets to find out what everybody has to say about the pumps. $57.40 on 13 gallons. So my Subaru had two little bars and now it's full, but it cost me 60 bucks almost. I'm looking at the possibility of walking to work. This is the first time that I'm filling up my tank in like 10 days. <laughs> we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so I would think the folks who are every day building the wealth of this nation could use a break. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I mean, you're feeling it too. How much are you spending, Luke? I know you drive a truck. <laughs> uh, too much. I think I'm trying to go back in time, but three or four weeks ago on the radio, I said, I'm surprised gas isn't higher. <laughs> and now we're here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm spending too much on gas. Um, my wife's car actually was the most we've ever put in it. Right. So she drives an SUV, you know, with two little kids. And um, it just seems... It just keeps going up. Yeah. Well, in both of our cars, one of the problems that we have is we have turbos in them. So you got to run the premium gasoline. Mm. So Julie put it in two weeks ago. She paid $89. She put it in this week. She paid 109 God. And it's only got a 20-gallon tank. It just feels like mm. there's no relief from any of this either. <laughs> Golly. Hey, Art, can we get the boat? Yes. We're going to drop anchor eight feet off the dock. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that has a 100-gallon tank. Oh, yeah. no, thanks. <laughs> Art's <laughs> now collecting cash to get on his boat. <laughs> <laughs> and the marina <laughs> charges an extra buck a gallon. Wait yeah, a minute. Because, marina, it's, because it is non-ethanol fuel. So. And you're paying for the convenience. Because can you imagine how hard it would be to fill 100 gallons with $5 gallon tanks? Nope. I don't want to. I could. I don't want to. You'd be hauling. That'd be your, that'd take you a week. <laughs> it would. <laughs> Is there an Uber for boats yet? Just throwing no. it out there. I'm no, just throwing it out there. Speaking of Uber, though, did you see they're charging a gas surcharge on your Ubers now? I'm surprised um, it took this long. I know. I mean, that seems like an easy moneymaker. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, because, you know, gas, highest it's been since 2008. Inflation to 7.9%. You know, stock market volatility continues. Are you adjusting the way that you handled all this uncertainty and some of your clients' retirement plans? Are they coming to you and saying, let's make some adjustments? We've made some adjustments on our own. We removed some interest rate risk from the portfolio as rates are getting ready to go up and continue to go up to fight inflation. And, you know, a lot of the clients we have, they have buckets of money that haven't lost money this year, right? Basically, every stock is down this year except for your oil stocks and maybe a gold ETF. But, you know, even in oil, as we've seen it jump to 130, earlier this week it was under 100, so it's bouncing around and it's very volatile as well. Um, oil, commodities, currencies are very, very volatile, so we don't tend to have a lot of, you know, percentages of our portfolios in those buckets because, yes, you could make 20, 30% on oil this year, but you may have lost 10% earlier this week when oil dropped 10% for kind of no reason. I mean, there's, there's always reasons for things, but... Mm -hmm. You know, oil, commodities, currencies, very, very aggressive. Um, it, it goes both ways, up or down. And, you know, Luke, there was an article in Morningstar Financial website that talks about three tricky decisions for every retirement plan. And I want to go through a couple of these and get your take on it. Uh, the first one being withdrawing at a popular rate. Do you agree? Is that something you'd advise your clients on? The popular rate right now, if you read any you know, financial articles or books or forums or whatever it may be, is the 4% rule. The 4% rule says you have your portfolio, you're invested, and if you take a 4% withdrawal, an annual withdrawal, your portfolio should hold stable and you should not run out of money, right? Shoulda, woulda, coulda sometimes, but uh, the 4% rule assumes you just have stocks, bonds, and cash. So we have clients at the 4%, we have clients higher than that, lower than that, right? We have some clients we're trying to, you know, reduce spending and some we're trying to increase spending. It kind of depends on where you're at, how young you are, how much of a legacy you want to leave. But our rule of thumb here is if you have other assets in the portfolio that aren't subject to market risk, aren't subject to interest rate risk, then you can have a higher withdrawal rate because in times where the market's down, you have a bucket of money that's not down. You know, we can help you control your retirement income, but the popular rate's 4%. You know, we usually start talking around 5% from a starting point, but it can be higher or lower than that depending on your goals and your financial plan. Yeah, one of the things that we get concerned with is 
is what is happening now. So you have a stock market that's down for the year. You also have a bond market that's down for the year. The bond market was also down last year. So you have two sectors that have 90% of your money that are getting hit at the same time. Well, with our clients, when they enter that retirement phase and they're doing that income planning phase, we usually try to have 30 or 40% of their portfolio in a non-correlated investment. So if both of those things are down like they are currently, they're not getting hit there and they don't have to have income loss or reductions in income or have any fear that that income will ever quit or not be there for them. So we do all kinds of strategies to make sure that that income, no matter what the market is doing, no matter what the economy is doing, they can have a secure, safe retirement for the rest of their life. Some of the tricky decisions for every retirement plan. Another one here says whether to purchase long term care insurance. Where do you stand on that? Long-term care insurance is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. 25% of our family is going to have a person that has long-term care need. Um, it's not something you can ignore. You either have to have enough assets set aside that you can pay for long-term care for about a four or five year period is kind of the average now in the industry. And when you're talking about starting and in Florida here, at about $5,000 a month for long-term care cost, even if you have a beautiful portfolio that has $500,000 or more, that could be completely gone with a prolonged long-term care stay, and you thought you were going to give four or $500,000 to your kids and your grandkids. Maybe there's nothing to give them. Yeah. So doing that planning now, uh, Luke and I don't like seeing our clients saddled with heavy long-term care costs in retirement. So we want solutions that can be a five-pay solution or a one and done solution. We don't like our clients having an extra long-term care cost in retirement because that's kind of your traditional long-term care solve. We don't like that. Uh, we want to make sure that that money is there for retirement spending and retirement income, not for extra added costs. But sometimes that might be somebody's only solution, obviously. Um, but we'd like to avoid that at all costs if we can. Yeah, a common misconception with long-term care is that Medicare covers it. Medicare does not cover long-term care. Long-term care means you can't do two of the six activities of daily living and you either need help from, you know, in-home care or you may need to go to, you know, more of a more of a nursing home or an assisted living facility. You know, for example, if you need 24-hour care in home, right? Let's say you told your kids or your grandkids, right, I'm never going to the nursing home, I'm never going to assisted living, but you need a lot of care. Yeah. It could be an upwards of $20,000 a month. So if you cut that back in half, right? I have a family member right now, she needs 12 hours of care and it's $9,000 a month. And then my mom and my aunt and things like that are, are there at night for to help her. It's my grandmother, but they're there at night to help her, but it's still $9,000 a month for 12 hours of in-home care. Mm -hmm. So having that strain on your portfolio, having that, you know, basically deplete your net worth and your nesting, um, it's a big, big event. And, you know, we have real life experiences from family members to clients. I mean, you could be, you know, starting point of 5,000, but if you don't want to leave your home, right, maybe it's eight or 9,000. And if it's could be really bad, I mean, it's 15 to 20,000. These are monthly expenses. So it's big, big numbers. Do and you run into people, Luke, that say, I mean, look, I built the in-law suite for when my parents get up in age, I want to help take care of them. But they quickly realize I'm overwhelmed. I can't do this on my own. Well, you're working. Yeah. So you right. had asked me earlier in the show, what do I do if Julie's out of town? <laughs> well, yeah, Art wants to be on the motorcycle. Yeah, Art wants to be in the boat. But guess what? There's five dogs at the house, right? So um, there is no just jumping and doing things. Well, all of a sudden you're taking care of mom or dad or both. Well, your care, that means you're not going on vacation. That means you're not doing these big, beautiful trips you thought you're going to be doing in retirement because they're at the house and they are needing care. Mm -hmm. So unless you have a family member, sister, brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, somebody close that can help kind of facilitate while you're gone, you are not leaving. And we see a lot of family and a lot of our clients go through this. And it's a very stressful time. And it's just not an easy event. It's not an easy thing. Yes, that helps having a place for mom and dad to be, but you better have a nursing care or something there because it is just an overwhelming job. And by the way, you probably are still working. Yeah. Yeah. You're still working. And so if you do the math, you know, I just gave you a 12 hour example, 12 hours a day was $9,000 a month. So maybe you only need it for 10 hours a day. Well, they're still at your house. You're still caring for them at night. Mm -hmm. You know, the in-law suite works because you don't have to pay rent or a you know, facility costs, but you need somebody to come in and help when you're at work. And that's the hard part. And that's what people 
fail to recognize when they do things like that with the in-law suite. Um, you know, it works out well for them to be there, but if they need care and you're having to pay for it, well, you can't leave work because you're help, helping pay for it, you know, or you just, you're not home all the time. It's not easy work. Very you difficult. know, we're talking about helping mom or dad get in and out of bed, helping mom or dad bathe, helping mom or dad eat, doing things that are just routine, ordinary life events. But it's not like you can't be there. If they fall down, it's a major problem. If they take the wrong medication, major problem. You know, so it's just one of those things that you've got to be there 24 seven or somebody has to be. And it's a really, really tough situation. And one more for you here is we're talking about the tricky decisions for every retirement plan. Finally, whether to purchase an annuity. This kind of seems like a no brainer. You mean no brainer in a no or no brainer in a positive way? I think it's a positive thing. That's what we seem to talk about here on Art of Money a lot. Aren't annuities very positive? They are, but they have a lot of negative news out there in the industry. So um, okay, that's why kind, that's why I asked no your brainer. question. <laughs> sort of no brainer. Okay, well, <laughs> well, educate me on it. What are your thoughts on the annuities? Where, where the annuities are extremely strong is you can get a guaranteed income stream for the rest of your life. Um, you can make sure that that payment, whether it's a thousand dollars a month, two thousand, five thousand, whatever the amount is, guaranteed for life. So you don't have any questions on whether that money is going to be there or not. What we do here at the office, rather than do an annuitization where you've given up that lump sum money to get that guaranteed income for life, we do it with riders. That way our clients still have access to the lump sums. They can get that same guaranteed income for life, but yet they still have full access and their kids and grandkids get the lump sum. So we don't like when you give away that lump sum. The only way that we would do something like that is we're doing some uh, real long-term planning for Medicaid purposes or something like that. But the annuities do have really strong points. It's just, you have to be careful. They have time periods. You know, there's a, when you first open an annuity, there's always what they call a surrender charge because the insurance company wants to make sure they get paid too. And if you cancel that contract in that period, there's going to be a fee. So you got to be careful there. And then there's also a time constraint. You know, you've got that, it could be a two year period up to a 10 year period. We won't do anything longer than that, but you don't have access to all of your money. You have partial access, but not full access. So you have to be careful with those type of things. Yeah, one thing also on a, for an annuity, and you know, we talked about long-term care just a second ago. Some of the ones we utilize here have what's called a long-term care doubler. So, you know, Art's example, you know, depending on the amount of money in the annuity and your age, and there's a lot of factors. But let's say you are set to get two thousand dollars a month guaranteed. Well, if you need long-term care, and it could be for any reason, right, of two of the six activities of daily living. Well, in some of these annuities, some of these contracts, you get a long-term care doubler. So now you're two thousand dollars a month or, or $2,000, however you want to put it, goes to $4,000 based on the contract and that's guaranteed. So it may not solve your long-term care needs, but the doubling of a portion of your income can definitely help. Thanks for listening. Want more from Art McPherson of McPherson Financial Group? Find us online at artofmoneyradio.com. We are an independent financial services firm helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of financial and insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. Securities offered through World Equity Group, Inc., member FINRA and SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Investment advisory services offered through ProStatus Group, LLC. McPherson Financial Group and ProStatus Group, LLC are separate entities and are not owned or controlled by World Equity Group, Inc. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Investment financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. Art McPherson is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Please consult with your attorney, accountant, and or tax advisor for advice concerning your particular circumstances. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Arthur McPherson. Florida Insurance License Number A1 74725. Today's show has been a work of art. 